Hello and welcome to the Kaizen Project. I am the Kaizen Man. After all the amazing feedback that I got from you for the first interview style video, I just had to give you more. And today's video is all about taking your hosting game to the next level. If you want to host like a boss, you want to have your friends over and your dates over and just really impress them with the kind of cocktails that you can make, then this video is for you. Whoa, 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 no. no. Okay, I know some of you, when you hear the word cocktail, you think sugary, fruity, high calorie drinks that just make for bad hangovers, right? I'm here to tell you that cocktails can be delicious, simple, still pack a punch and not break the bank. And today I have a very special guest for you. This guy is a champion. He's played soccer for European leagues at the age of 17. He's an amazing chef. And we have conversations ranging from food to meditation to working out, just a whole gamut of topics. But today, Nick is gonna be talking to you about having an awesome bar right at home and making delicious cocktails that take your hosting game to the next level. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So we're gonna start right at the beginning. Sure. How did you first start learning the skill of bartending or cocktails? Cocktails and bartending. So um, my story is a bit different. It's, uh, it's probably a lot different than most people's had, but uh, I worked as a server at a Delta Hotel in Guelph. And one night we were basically hosting this big concert that they have, the Hillside Festival that they do in Guelph. And all the bands came to the hotel after, on the last night of performing. And we basically had 100 bandmates and three of us working at the bar. Two of them very experienced bartenders. One of them had the stomach flu. The other one had a, uh, I think she hurt her wrist. She had, she had something on her wrist all night, like a cast. And she could barely do anything. So I was stuck behind the bar. Didn't know how to make it. The only thing I could do was pour a beer, pour a glass of wine. And I was stuck behind the bar and I was, uh, basically, I, I finished at 6 a.m. Cleaning. I uh, lost bills. Made horrible drinks. Then after that, I just kind of told myself that I, it wouldn't happen to me. <laughs> so just, uh, just to get an idea, you're a pretty young guy even now, but how old were you when this, uh, when this happened? When this happened, I was, uh, I was 17 turning 18. So you're not even actually legally allowed to, to I'm serve not, alcohol. I'm not legally allowed to serve alcohol <laughs> awesome. at all. Great story. Cool. So if you were to go back in time or yeah. teach a complete beginner, someone who has no idea about making cocktails, uh, and you wanted to teach them, say, three basic things, yeah. where would you start? What would you focus on? So for a lot of people who haven't done any work with cocktails at all, I would suggest that they take a cooking approach to it. The easiest thing to do is use fresh ingredients. Go out to the store if you want to use oranges, raspberries. Like See what you like and, and start there. Start with liquors you like. And yeah, use the, the freshest, best ingredients possible. I'm not gonna go tell someone to go buy top shelf, the most expensive liquor all the time. Right. But buy the stuff that you're gonna drink that whoever you're hosting for is gonna drink. The second thing I would say is know as much as you can about liquor you're buying. If you want to, if you like stronger liquors, if you, like, if you want to be mixing things, if you're, if you're making it for large crowds, just know what they taste like, know roughly what they do in a cocktail. And the third thing I would say is try and find balance. It's, it's very different for a home bartender and an actual bartender in a professional environment, but find balance in a cocktail. If there's citrus, try and round it out with some sweetness. If it's bitter, you know, sweeten it up a little bit as well. Mm. Add some water, add some dilution to it. And, and garnish it. Just, just try things out and be creative would be probably my, my fourth thing. I'm adding an extra one here, but Amazing. you, you got it. It's all good. Yeah, more, more is good. Yeah, That's more good. is good. But be, be creative. Try, try anything. It could be something savory, but you know what? Throw it in a cocktail. Try it out. And you know what? Trial and error is amazing. Like, there's so many good cocktails that have come from trial and error. So sure. I would 100% recommend it. You know, most people who are first starting out, what mistakes can they avoid? Some of the things I would really look for is just to be prepared. If you're, if you're having people over, just do your garnishes ahead of time. Mm. Have everything prepped. Do, if you're making simple syrups, which is just a combination of, of sugar and water, is do those things ahead of time so you're not worrying about them. It's, mm -hmm. And again, with that cooking approach, do it first, get it out of the way so there's no stress at all. In addition to, to being prepared is just, just being organized, setting all the tools you need, um, all the fruit you need, setting that out in front of you so you just whip these things out. The third thing I would say is to stay clean. It sounds like an easy one, you know, just, just clean up after you, but, but keep a cloth around and just as you go, Keep cleaning, mm -hmm. wash down glasses, polish things, right? It's from, a, from an aesthetic point of view, it's, it's also nicer. Be prepared, stay organized with what you're doing, when you're hosting especially. And the last one is just stay clean, clean as you go. When you were first starting out, you know, what did the process look like of you actually learning the skill? Yeah. And then what have you done since to maintain the fact that you're still at the top of your game? I started learning basically 
the classic cocktails. You got your old fashions, Manhattans, like some of these you've probably all heard of. I started with those, and obviously there's variations on these, but the way I, I approached it was, you go online, I was, I was looking at YouTube at this time, mm -hmm. and reading cocktail books, and YouTube to learn, really? <laughs> YouTube, who would have thought, <laughs> who would have thought, Kaiserman. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I started learning from that, then I started picking up books, and I only really got passionate about bartending probably probably two years ago. So before that, I just wanted general knowledge so I could go into work and, and be comfortable behind the bar. Now I'm actually passionate about it, so you start making things at home, you start learning more, and just like knowledge is power really when it comes to, when it comes to bartending. And how has bartending impacted your life, or how has making cocktails impacted your life? It's really the social aspect. I think it's it's fun, a lot like photography. There's um, there's an artistic avenue you can kind of take with it, and I always wanted to be a cook growing up. So this was kind of the um, the middle ground between being creative, using your hands to create something, and having someone in front of you that you can interact with, being being the guest at, at the restaurant, or even even when you're hosting at home. Even if we're social people from birth, or just if we were raised that way, I think it still makes you step outside your shell and just kind sure. of test yourself, test yourself in social situations. Yeah. And I think it, it translates the exact same if, if you're having people over your home, because that's, right. that's why you host in general. You, you try to make everyone have a good time. So sure. I think it's fun to test yourself and try these things out that you wouldn't usually. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And I definitely recommend that you try this at home. And when you do, share your pictures or your videos and use the hashtag, the Kaizen Project. That's project with a K. You can find links to Nick and myself in the description. Leave a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, it's Kaizen Man. Cheers.